University. Joining me now is also our key guest, Harish Salve, Senior uh, Supreme Court Advocate. I'm also joined by Ritu Dalme, a celebrity chef and also a petitioner who went to the court against this today. I'm also joined by Ritu Parnabora, a gay rights activist. Ritu Dalme, over to you first, since you're a petitioner in this case, you're currently traveling. What, what is your first reaction when you heard the news that the Supreme Court is willing to relook its order? So I was in Lisbon and the first thing I did was get myself drunk silly because I think this is the most amazing step that has happened in the history of this case. And to be honest with you, for me, what's very important is my faith in the Constitution and my faith in the court system has been just put back because it's been, it's been very disappointing what happened in 2014. And mm -hmm. now with this, there's some light at the end of the tunnel again. It's it's wonderful to see you uh, smiling there, Ritu. And of course, in yes. in your petition, you and the other four petitioners have said that we live in fear. You had pointed out how this is actually against the constitution. Now, interestingly, in the last case, the Supreme Court had left it to the politicians. It said Parliament should make a law. Were you hopeful of that ever happening at all? Well, I'll be honest with you, just two weeks ago, I was having a discussion about what will happen with this uh, case over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And someone said, you'll be very surprised if something happens in your lifetime. And today, I think, forget about my lifetime. Uh, it'll happen before I turn 50. So, <laughs> yes, I wasn't really expecting it. I was very negative about it. But today, I think uh, that attitude and that mindset has changed. Mm -hmm. When you talked, uh, Ritu, in your petition about actually living in fear, tell us about that. What did this mean, living in fear? What, what does it mean to be a gay person in India today? So, Sonia, I hate to say something like this, but a person like me, to be honest with you, who lives in a city, who has got a bit of recognition, is not someone who will be targeted. And a friend of mine once mentioned it to me, that it's not people like you who need to worry. You need to step out of your little boundary to see what's happening. And I did that, and it's horrific. It's really horrific. And you know what's the worst part? Is that after 2009 verdict, a lot of people came out of the closet. Mm -hmm. And suddenly in 2014, when the law changed again, it's like all the people who came out, uh, life suddenly changed for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, again, as I said, what may hold true for me does not hold true for a lot of people and especially in smaller towns and smaller villages. Right. And I mean, I don't want to talk about the case too much because mm -hmm. of the matter is still subjudiced. But what's happening in this country at this point with a law like this, um, it's horrific. It's horrific. It's against human rights. It's against the very basics of one one. I mean, expects. It's not even something which is a request. It's not something that I'm begging for something. It is my very basic right. And Let's, no human being should be denied that very basic human right. Let me just bring no. in Ritu Parna Bora also on this, who is also a gay rights activist. Uh, but Ritu, just to pick up on what uh, Ritu Dalmia said, actually, about it being an issue of human rights. This is not about it only affecting those who are gay or who have a particular mm. sexual orientation. It affects me, you, everyone. Yes. Tell us. Tell us about how you think perhaps that has changed. The mainstreaming of this has also been something which is welcome. Yeah, so so the so the news uh, kept on saying uh, gay sex, gay sex. It's not gay sex. It's actually uh, non pinovaginal sexual act. So any anyone who indulges in non pinovaginal sexual act will be criminalized on the section 377. Mm -hmm. Of course, homosexual people are targeted because we, we do not have the privacy of the bedrooms or of the of the closed doors mm -hmm. and because marriage gives us privileges to to a heterosexual couple and therefore it is very important that this act um, goes which is very archaic uh, exactly. goes out of our country mm -hmm. uh, as as soon as possible um, because it is impacting everyone and, right. and even as Indian yeah. citizens. And I just want to bring in Mr. Harish Salve on that because Mr. Salve, let's look at the constitutional issues really which are raised uh, over this. The Supreme Court making the point on an individual's right to life and liberty. This being a human rights issue, not just about a particular community or about people with a particular sexual orientation. What would you say, to, sir, today about this uh, decision by the Supreme Court bench now to refer this to a larger bench to actually reconsider its own verdict? 
Actually, uh, uh, Sonia, the funeral rights remain. 377 is dead. <laughs> The that's, nine judge bench. That's great news, sir. I think Ritu is raising a glass over, of champagne when you say that. Go ahead. Uh, the uh, nine judge bench, which recognized the right to privacy in its widest dimensions and gave a decent burial to this silly point about the right to privacy not being a facet of your right to life. Mm -hmm has also addressed a number of legal issues which arose around the right to life and one of them was your right to personal choices mm -hmm. and they have dealt with this 2013 judgment or the legal issues which the 2013 judgment they have reversed mm -hmm. so but they said since however the 2013 is pending review we don't i mean i wish they had said the judgment is wrong right but uh, they didn't so now somebody has to say i read the nine judge bench and i say the judgment is wrong and close the case mm -hmm. But uh, Mr. Salve, let, you, let me just ask you, going back to when the Supreme Court had said, you know, this is a matter for the legislator, let Parliament decide. The fact that again and again, the Supreme Court seems to be taking progressive decisions, mm -hmm. stepping in where lesser mortals perhaps fear to tread. No, Why so, yeah. is it in a sense what that... What bothers me is... Yes. What bothers me is when our constitution was framed, the framers of the constitution... Uh, Ambedkar ji, whom you heard so much re about recently, and uh, the, one of the architects of our constitution, mm -hmm. he called Article 32 the right to move the Supreme Court, the heart and soul of the constitution. Mm -hmm. Because we don't leave it to the lawmakers. If, if, if part three rights are violated, it's the court and not the lawmakers who's your recourse. Mm -hmm. If you hold there is a right to privacy, and the right to privacy or, or all these human rights, right, right to religious beliefs, the right to thought, the right to privacy. We have all evolved as societies over the decades, over the century. Mm -hmm. And these are, uh, these are changing notions, you know, these are not cast in stone. Exactly. This is not like a banking law in which you have to amend a section. This is, the law grows as you go along. Mm -hmm. And once Supreme Court accepts the right to privacy, all these controversies must come to an end. I mean, we should not be wasting our time even deciding these cases at any length. Let me ask finally, sir, a question to you and then to my other panelists, uh, Ritu also. But let me ask you finally, Mr. Salve, do you find it interesting that on the one hand, we seem to be politically getting more regressive, and this is of course across governments because you know that the Congress hadn't repealed this either, that politically we're getting more regressive, but the Supreme Court and society is getting more progressive. See, the Supreme Court has never fortunately been held back by the conservative opinion in society. When we extended the right to life to a right to existence with dignity, that was itself a huge leap. In 1978, we buried 10 fathoms deep the notion mm -hmm. that taking away life in accordance with law means if parliament makes a law, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. We read in due process. So our constitution has moved way ahead and the politicians have got left behind where human rights are concerned. The Supreme Court's track record is fantastic when it comes to human rights. Mm -hmm. So, and the, the whole idea why the constitution makers left this to the judiciary rather than to parliament and we created part three was because the political system has its <coughs> pulls and pressures. There should be something which has to be, has, has to be isolated from political uh, pulls and pressures yes. from the dust and din of politics and decided in a cold atmosphere of a court. Exactly. And that's what we have done in nine judges. So all this must end now. You know, and on, based on the highest progressive ideas, uh, Ritu, final words with you tonight. Uh, do, uh, do you agree with the question that at least uh, thank God for the Supreme Court? Well, as I told you right in the beginning, my faith is there in the Constitution and I have faith in the court of this country. I mean, I don't think it's about the politicians. I don't think it's about the government because... I think it's at the end of the day, you've got to have faith in the court and today it has been proven. So I'm very, very optimistic. Right. Uh, thanks so much. Parna, final words from you? Yeah, I, I would uh, uh, reiterate what the 2009 judgment said, that the constitutional morality is much more important than, than public morality. And mm -hmm. I feel like this is the right time for the constitutional morality to come up and give rights to uh, everyone. Right. Yeah. Thank you all very much for joining me tonight.